We are back at Park Place Lanes for the conclusion of the match between Ben Vestal's team and Craig Holbrook's team. At this point, through eight frames, uh, Ben Vestal's team has 473 with three marks to fill, and Craig Holbrook's team has 468 with one mark. So things turned around pretty quickly in that last four boxes as the uh, team captained by Ben Vestal took the lead. They came back from behind and took the lead against uh, Craig Holbrook's team with several big marks by uh, John Starner, Mike Walker. Actually, everybody on the team had, had some marks in that stretch. So now, heading down into the last two boxes, Joanne Rosano is looking at a 2, 4, 7, 10 split with some wood that looks pretty positive, like it might help. And uh, Celeste Buckmore and there is a great shot by Joanne for the spare. And, and as I was starting to say, Celeste has a, another makeable split. And that's a spare as well. So a couple of terrific shots right there. Let's go back and look at the spare by Jojo. You can see she hits just to the right, just catches that wood uh, just to the right of the two pin and kicks the wood over into the 10. And Celeste hits this one pretty much perfectly. Uh, that might have gone without the wood, although I think uh, probably the wood directed the uh, three pin over into the seven. Let's see what happens here with these very, very important fill balls. And Joanne punches through the middle. Uh, big five lead. And that is a, it looks like a seven for Celeste. She's got the five, seven, ten. And again, she's conferring with, with a teammate as to how to play that wood. I think that's Chris trying to figure out exactly where she wants to play the wood to try and convert that five, seven, ten. And Joanne Rosano going, wow, that is a spare. Joanne converts the big five. And let's take a, a let's go right to a replay of that. You can see here that she goes to the inside of the three pin. That comes off the wall and directly across to take out the two four, and then rolls back to uh, knock down the six. That was probably not exactly how she played it, but that's still a, a really really timely spare for Joan Rosano in the tenth. Let's see what Celeste can do with this. She missed the wood altogether. She was probably trying to go very, very low on that wood. And in trying to go really low, she ended up um, missing it altogether. So you could see from the third ball that if she went high, obviously that wasn't going to take the seven pin. So it's, that's a nine box. Celeste finishes with a 119. And now Joanne will fill that second spare that she recorded in the tenth. what she can do with that. This is just uh, going to tighten the match up even more. It's, it's almost a tie game. And Joanne leaves exactly the same thing. She punches out five, but that gives her a 1-12 game. And, and with 30 pins in the last two, that closes the gap a little bit. And she'll turn it over to Lynn Thompson, who is working on a strike. And Sarah Vestal will be up for uh, Ben Vestal's team. And Lynn drops eight, almost throwing a double. Sarah's got the one, three, seven, makeable split, but not an easy one. And uh, a little bit hard to see. It looks like that piece of wood on lane 18 has rolled off the deck, and you see then it rolled back on. And it might be a little bit tricky for Lynn to push it back into the 4-8 and convert this spare. It's a little hard to see from here, but it might be a... Well, she got it. I guess it was a little bit further back than I thought. So that's a spare for Lynn Thompson in the ninth. Meanwhile, Sarah is still looking at the 1-7 and seven on the third ball. And she'll take an 8 box. So this is... Uh, a crucial fill for Lynn Thompson on that spare. 
and she's got eight. She missed the head pin by a mile, but got a nice break and uh, just left the one and eight. So that's an eight fill on the spare. <clears throat> right now, it's basically a tie game with uh, uh, the spare tires having an advantage of two marks. And great bid by Lynn, but she doesn't get the eight pin. And an excellent try by Sarah on that to convert that three drop, but, uh, but the five and nine wouldn't go. So Lynn will take a nine, and that gives her a 128 game. And Sarah takes a 10. Just a 97, but that puts them ahead by one right at this point. But they've got those, as I say, they've got three marks to fill. So in reality, the uh, team of spare tires, captained by Ben Vestal, is leading, by, depending on what they get on the three marks. Hawk Hallis and Mike Walker up for their last two. Hawk punches out the half Worcester. And Mike Walker with nine. Leaving the six pin with a plank in front of it. Should be able to make that. And a spare by Hawk Hallis. That is a that was a superlative shot, as Bob Foraker would have said, to uh, convert that spare. Really, really clutch. And Mike Walker also converts the spare. So that's a couple of important marks for, for both guys. Let's take another look at this spare by Rich Hawk Hallis. He goes right into the one three pocket and makes it very, very cleanly. Converts that half Worcester. Let's see what he can put on it. He has got, looks like it's going to be an eight drop. That gives Hawk 122 through nine. Ooh, and Mike Walker just punches out two. So he's got 140 through nine, which is excellent. But, um, oh, and, and there's a spare by Hawk. But Mike wanted a bigger fill than that. Wanted to, to put another mark up there, if at all possible. And there he's just gone through the, through the ball in the same spot. So he really needs a big out here. Mike really wants to try and... Now that's a pretty big out. That's a 10 box. Nice shot by Mike Walker to uh, wiggle out of that that uh, situation after the the, uh, the two fill. And as let's see, let's take another look at the spare by Hawk Hallis. 310 spare with no wood, and the ball takes them both. That's just a perfect shot by by Hawk Hallis. Very very important spare in the 10th. And here is the 10 box by Mike Walker. Another clutch shot. He takes out the half Worcester uh, the other way by going on the outside towards the uh, the hole, and he takes he takes that down. And Hawk Hallis will fill his spare with nine, giving him a 141 game. And that's that's a pretty dramatic turnaround, giving them the uh, Craig Holbrook's team now a, a 24 pin lead. But um, Ben Vestal's team still has two marks to fill, so as against none for Craig Holbrook's team. So they have a chance to really cut down that 24 pin lead as Dave Dupuy and Chris Winniar step up. Dave with a nine drop. And Chris only puts three on that spare, so that's a little disappointing, but he still uh, has a chance to, to make another spare. Meanwhile, Dave is looking at the five pin and he is all over that. And Chris has got seven, still looking at one, two, and ten. And he has got an eight box. Dave picked up eleven in that box, so it's a pretty all of a sudden, it's a pretty substantial lead for Holbrook's team again with the, the three big marks by Hawk Hallis and Dave Dupuy. And all of a sudden, and, and at nine, Phil. So Chris Winniars really, really needs a, uh, a big 10th box. And he's got a chance. He's got a triangle as Dave Dupuy picks up the spare in the 10th. Let's see if Chris can work on this. Three, five, six triangle. He's got it. 
So it's going to come down to the fill balls to see if uh, spare tires can reduce the lead or if uh, Holbrook's team will extend it. Dave Dupuis delivers and he's got an 8 fill which gives him a 121 game. That's just a, a clutch finish right there. And Chris Winnier is with a strike on the fill. So the, a couple of clutch finishes by both bowlers right there. But that's going to make it a 33 pin lead for uh, for Craig Holbrook's team as, as we look at the strike by Chris Winniers again. It's 33 pins, but John Starner is working on a strike. So it would be almost imperative that he, uh, if he could throw another strike here, that would tighten it up to give him a double. That would, this thing is not over yet. Craig Holbrook with a nine drop, leaving a four pin with a plank. So this is a huge ball for John Starner. Wow, and he throws a good ball right in the 1-3 pocket. A little bit light, but uh, but a, a good ball. And he, he drops 8, but he's got an 8-10 split as Craig makes the spare. And this is this is really going to take a, a shot because I don't know. And I, hard to see how. That, it was tough to see how John Starner could get both of those pins. He kicked the wood off the wall to get the eight, but the 10 was, uh, it was pretty tough to get both of those. So that's a nine box and a 122. So that's going to pretty much settle it. It looks like uh, Craig Holbrook's team is going to hold off the challenge of, of spare tires, thanks to some great bowl. And there, that'll definitely put it away. Uh, some great bowling by the veterans in the, uh, the team of, uh, Craig Holbrook as they put nine marks on the board in their last ten boxes. So they uh, really after after uh, Ben Vestal's team had rebounded strongly in boxes five through eight to take the lead, things were uh, were looking pretty different then. But but uh, Craig's team came up with a fantastic finish to. Uh, to put away the victory. So Craig will just fill in this strike just to uh, finish the final total. Punches out the two pin, but it doesn't really matter. And so the uh, final score, Craig ended up filling that strike with an eight. So that gave him a 145 game. That gave his team a 647 total for the match, which was good enough for the victory over Spare tires led by Ben Vestal with a 594. Great bowling by both teams. Really exciting match. Glad you could join us.